What a year it's been, ladies and gentlemen. One year ago today, something we didn't want to happen happened. The Obama administration took power. And a man that uh, tried to prevent us from what we've had the last year is on our newsmaker line this morning, our good friend, Senator John McCain. Welcome back to the Common Sense Club. How are you? Well, thanks, Scott. It's good to be back with the Common Sense Club. <laughs> it's much needed here when we're trying to do the Lord's work in the city of Satan. So it's, well, I'm very happy to be back with you, Scott. So give me your reaction to what happened last night in the, the bluest of all blue states. Stunning and uh, in some ways predictable in that the anger has been building and building out there over not only a government takeover and a $2.5 trillion dollar deficit uh, as results of this, quote, reform, but also the process, the unsavory Chicago-style sausage-making, deal-making that uh, has really angered the American people as well, whether it be the Cornhuster kickback or the Florida flim-flam or the Louisiana purchase. And the latest ones, because of the tragedy in Haiti, it was a little bit overshadowed. But the deal I made with the unions, uh, Scott, I, is an outrage, is an outrage that one favored political group should uh, receive that kind of dispensation that the rest of the citizens have to pay for. I mean, it, it, it is so stunning. And the exit polls show that Scott Brown, who, by the way, I was very humbled that he would mention my name last night in his acceptance uh, speech, and his victory speech, um, uh, he he tapped into that, but he also ran a great grassroots person-to-person uh, -person campaign, which is the way to win campaigns, as you well know, Scott. So what now? Uh, it doesn't sound like Axelrod this morning saying, hey, you know, people want this. This is a crisis. You have a lot of people blaming her campaign, not getting the message that people don't want Obamacare. Do you anticipate they're going to do some parliamentary procedures to delay his seating and rush uh, uh, the, the passage of this legislation, get it to his desk? My concern is not so much delaying his seating as it is them jamming it through the House of Representatives so it doesn't have to come back to the Senate and then to the President's desk. That would be an outrage. The American people have spoken last night in the form of the Massachusetts election, and they are, and they, all polls all over the country show uh, that the American people want this sausage-making stopped. And we are ready to sit down with the Democrats for the first time with transparency, with the C-SPAN cameras, not in some backroom deal-making. And we'll, we can agree immediately for malpractice reform, to go across state lines to get insurance policies that you want, rewards for wellness and fitness, and for encouraging health savings accounts, allowing small businesses to pool their assets to get better insurance co uh, policies, portability of health insurance. There's so many things that would bring down the cost of health care and preserve the quality. What they are trying to foist off on the American people is a massive government takeover of the health care system with costs going high. And by the way, Scott, you know one of the reasons why the people in Massachusetts are so have felt on the exits said that this was the number one issue? Because they adopted basically that same thing in Massachusetts, and these costs are out of control. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, we've had our own grassroots uprising like it happened in Massachusetts uh, out here. And, of course, this is in a, in a red state that was uh, smart enough to vote for John McCain and Sarah Palin <laughs> in November 2008. But uh, the town hall... Uh, she is the the town hall meetings, the tea parties, the calls uh, to Congress have obviously scared Byron Norgan off. I mean, what did you think when you when you saw the fact that he was not seeking re-election? I was surprised, uh, but uh, I also and look, I'm not an expert on North Dakota politics, but I also know the governor is very popular, and I've had the pleasure of meeting him on a few occasions. He's a He's an outstanding guy. Uh, what, what the other thing about it is, we're having candidates emerge all over the country, uh, Scott, who are highly qualified, which is really what you need. Look, Scott Brown r rode the crest of a wave, but if Scott Brown had not conducted the outstanding campaign, if he hadn't been such a great candidate, he still wouldn't have won. You see my point? We need good candidates, and they're starting to emerge. Mark Kirk in Illinois, Carly Fiorina, in my view, out in California. Um, uh, the, the, we've got a great candidate up in New Hampshire. We have... Uh, 
uh, uh, uh, Rob Portman in Ohio, who was who's a really great on budgetary matters. We're, we've recruited some very good candidates, and that I think is going to. I, I think if unless the Obama administration starts governing from the center, stops all this big government spending, out of control spending, bankrupting our kids' futures, then you're going to see a seismic event come November. Now, Congressman Earl Pomeroy is evidently actively seeking the American Life Insurance job that Frank Keating has now to be a big, uh, big-time uh, insurance uh, lobbyist. And uh, in a battle, uh, in a battle, coincidentally enough, with Kim Dorgan, uh, Senator Dorgan's wife, uh, who is uh, who is a vice president there and, and seeking the, the the top post. So we have two North Dakotans fighting now because evidently Earl wants to join Byron in retirement. So talk about uh, talk about an amazing change going on, isn't that something? It's amazing, but also also I'd like to remind you that pharma is probably the sleaziest of all of the uh, of all these people who have cut special deals behind closed doors with Harry Reid and with the president i mean they they they, they have, during when president obama was a senator he uh, supported our effort to have drug reimportation from canada now they cut a deal that they oppose it and of course uh, no competition Amongst the drug companies for Medicare patients, I mean it's it's just outrageous what's been going on. Yeah. I want to ask you two, two other quick sure. things here before we let you go. Uh, sure. Mitch McConnell was out here on Monday uh, announcing, as you mentioned, Governor Hoban in this race now uh, for the uh, for the Senate seat and. Uh, being the, uh, you see, he, it, clearly, this is uh, the Republicans to lose at this point. Not even a Democratic candidate entering the race right now. But Senator McConnell announced that uh, that uh, were he to be elected, John Hoban would on day one go on the Appropriations Committee and uh, the Energy Committee. How, uh, how how should North Dakotans take that? And that uh, they think, think enough of uh, John Hoban as a candidate to put him as a freshman on the Appropriations Committee. That just doesn't happen every day, does it? Because I think it's the respect that all of us have for for the governor. I think it is. Uh, uh, I know that he is committed to eliminating this pork barrel earmark spending, which has caused corruption here in Washington and the anger of the American people. And so, uh, look, I I welcome him. We, with this, I, Scott, I don't mean to to be able to take this the wrong way, but when I see Scott Brown and Governor Hovens and uh, and Rob Portman and Mark Kirk and and some of these other. I'm so pleased that we're going to have another generation of great leadership for our Republican Party, and I consider the governor one of those. And what advice would you have for him? Because he's talked about exporting the North Dakota way to Washington. We're one of three states with a surplus now. We don't deficit spend here. There's no general obligation debt. Uh, you know, So he's talked about exporting the North Dakota way to Washington. On the Appropriations Committee, what advice would you have for Governor Hoban were you to get there that, that could truly transform the processes that exist now? Join me and Senator Tom Coburn and, and uh, numerous others, the growing band of people who are saying, stop this corruption, stop this earmarking and pork barrel spending. And I'm confident that he will. The other thing I would, the only other bit of advice I would have, don't take anything for granted. Uh, two or four weeks ago, no one, three weeks ago, no one gave Scott Brown <laughs> the snowball's chance in Gila Bend, Arizona. <laughs> and and uh, he's now the the first senator from Massachusetts since 1972, and I'm so proud to have known him. By the way, he's also in the National Guard and Army Reserve for 30 years. He's a great guy. He'll add a lot on national security as well. Good, good friend of the former president, George Bush, as well. We've talked to Rob many times on the program. Last question. I saw your interview with Matt Lauer the other day, and you clearly were a little ir irritated, and I didn't blame you. Uh, our listeners, too, are really tired of the trashing of Sarah Palin that's going on. Have you had enough of this? Yeah, and I wasn't particularly irritated. It's just just trying to make Matt Lauer understand. I had just come from back from a trip to Afghanistan. Six brave young Americans had been killed in the previous few days in Afghanistan. <laughs> For me to spend my time going back, you know, over a campaign that's been over a year or so ago, but that I'm proud of. And I can tell you, one of the proudest aspects of my campaign was Sarah Palin agreeing to be my running mate and the way she energized our party in America, and I continue to be somewhat entertained by the constant attacks by the liberal left, especially the feminists, on Sarah Palin, but she's doing great. She's doing great, and I can't tell you how much uh, I appreciate the opportunity I had to get to know her and Todd and the whole family.
Senator, always a pleasure. We've got to make way for Rush here, so we'll let you go and talk okay, to you again yeah. soon. And uh, appreciate you very much. Good luck battling uh, the parliamentary games that will kick in today on uh, Obamacare. We're glad you're there still. Thanks again, Scott. See you. Bye. Good, good to talk to you. Senator John McCain, our guest in the Common Sense Club. God bless you, folks. Thank you for listening. 